know how fast you were going? Excuse me, roll down that window right now. What the... iconic Audi R8 from its concept debut as the RSQ in iRobot to Tony Stark's in the Marvel movies. Everyone goes nuts over this supercar. And while I said that the Aston Martin was like a vintage leather jacket, everyone thinks it's cool and emotional purchase, this, this is completely different. This is like a business transaction. Everything about the R8 is a blend of appropriate function. Let me explain. First off, check out this beautiful Camara Gray metallic paint, which has a hint of blue and it's absolutely stunning. Carbon fiber front spoiler, rocker inlay, and rear diffuser. I mean, if you look at all the carbon fiber this thing has, it's actually a crazy bargain. Also, for a measly 300 additional bucks, the Audi emblem thankfully can be matched in black as well. And one of the nicest features, fresh for 2020, a new honeycomb grille and front spoiler lip design. It might just be a cosmetic refresh, but it makes the R8 look way edgier compared to the way it looked before. But one part I didn't notice immediately but really like is that they darken the headlights and it completely changes the look. And you finally get laser headlights, which makes nighttime illumination really good. A lot of times because these sports cars are so low, I feel like the beam throw is also short, but I didn't really feel that way in here. And coming around to the back, there's no deployable spoiler. You have a fixed carbon fiber spoiler, which honestly I think fills out the upper rear space so nicely. Obviously there's a functional aspect to it, but it just makes this R8 look so mean. And you also have this beautiful engine back here too. Whew, it's hot. And I think it has one of the most beautiful looking stock exhaust designs I've ever reviewed. Obviously the piece of resistance is the naturally aspirated V10 that you got to hear a sound bite of at the beginning of this video. And when you wanna push this car to the extreme, the sound it makes is absolutely insane. And the V10 performance model has 602 horsepower, 413 pound-feet of torque. I'll get to driving dynamics in a bit, but let's hop in the front real quick. And in true Audi fashion, the interior has just as many nice touches as the exterior design. Black and red contrast, diamond stitched sports seats that have 18 ways of adjustment and one of the best leg thigh bolsters I've tested in a supercar. And while certain elements are showing its age, like the MMI control knob area, the minimalistic design of this R8 is just so clean, so German. I mean, look at this. This slot right here, literally designed just for your key, but this is a push to start system. So you're probably gonna have your key in your purse or your pocket, but just in case there's a slot for it or the cup holders, for example, I was actually surprised there were two of them. And at first sight, I thought, oh, they're quite itty bitty. What are you really gonna fit in there? To my surprise, I actually could fit my large coffee mug and water bottle. Although they are positioned a little bit further back, which kind of discourages you from drinking while driving. Coffee, you, you know what I mean. And even inside, there is such an abundance of carbon fiber here, here, there. It's everywhere. Even the housing around the gauge cluster. It's just so special. Then you slide this open and come to a little phone compartment that actually has a Qi charger. Now keep in mind, Apple CarPlay is wired. It's not wireless and it is a little petite. My little iPhone fits in beautifully, no problemo. But if you have a big Android phone like this ROG Phone 3, it's really not gonna fit very nicely in there. 
but at least you have Android Auto. And did you notice it pulls up right there in the gauge cluster? Because there's no center display. Everything is right here. Earlier, I called this a total business transaction, and here's why. Everything has a spot, a place, and everything has a function. Take, for example, the sun visors. Audi took into account your seating position, and instead of a traditional flap out, you flap it in to use the sun visor. Take the steering wheel, for example. Yes, you may need a PhD to learn all the buttons and sequences, but I gotta give Audi credit. The user manual is very well written to explain all the functions. A, B, C, where the heck is this? Steering wheel. And yes, the flat bottom wheel is absolutely gorgeous and feels so good in my hands. But when I first got into the car, I saw the drive select exhaust button and I assumed like every other performance car I've driven, I'll just turn it to dynamic, put the exhaust on sport, easily turn this into a snarling exhaust popping monster. But that wasn't quite the case. I was actually a little disappointed at first. Yes, this thing got a little bit more throatier, the exhaust burble was there, along with a more dynamic gear program, but it still felt really tame, but when I press this right here, this race button, that's when everything came alive. This is why I'm calling the Audi R8 an epitome of a business transaction. It's all calculated, and if you were gonna just drive this around as a daily, you could absolutely avoid using race mode and even get a little spicy with dynamic drive select. But behind all this daily usability lurks a monster, rawr, just waiting to be released on a track, and that's why I think this is such a good deal. It's just like the brakes. The V10 Performance trim has 15-inch carbon ceramic brakes in the front and 14 inches in the rear. They have an intense level of bite, which actually was a little tricky to get used to on regular roads. But again, I could get used to that for the daily. What's more important is that these brakes are going to be phenomenal during a track event and will be able to take repeated abuse without any hint of brake fade. Now, unlike the regular V10 model, this V10 Performance does not have the magnetic ride technology. Instead, it's on the significantly stiffer side with a fixed sport suspension. So going over bumps can be a bit rough, but beyond that, it's been a super easy drive. The oh. dynamic steering is not over boosted and it's tuned really well. The legendary Quattro all-wheel drive in this vehicle really shines. And honestly, kind of like the Nissan GTR, throw a set of winter tires on this thing, which you could buy at Audi. And as long as the roads are paved, this is truly a magnificent year-round capable vehicle. Now, a few weeks ago, I mentioned on Instagram and Twitter that I would pick the top eight questions from an Ask Me Anything round. So here we go. Question number one, why not just buy a 911 Turbo? Well, actually, I've never driven a turbo. <coughs> Porsche, if you'd like me to review one, I would gladly do that. But the thing is, I know Porsche has an amazing fan base, but non-Porsche fans kind of have a hard time distinguishing between a Carrera and a turbo. So why not a 911 turbo? Because you do want to stand out. And also, you get a naturally aspirated V10. Question number two. Is the infotainment hard to use? Actually, I hope this gets integrated more often. I loved having Waze in the center of the screen. And since I can talk to Siri to change my music, it worked really well all together. Question number three. Can Abby drive it? Do you know how fast you were going? Excuse me, roll down that window right now. What the heck? Do you know how fast you were going, ma'am? No, no, you're, you're, you're coming out. Question number four. If it has a dual clutch, how does it feel at low speeds? Is it clunky? Honestly, other than the very touchy carbon ceramic brakes, this was really easy to drive. If you're in dynamic or in one of the race modes and driving on a normal road, it will feel very clunky, 
but that's because the dual clutch transmission shifts so fast and it's not as worried about your comfort anymore. Question number five, how high can it rev? Well, this wonderful engine can go up to 8,100 RPMs. Question number six, how does this compare to the NSX as a daily driver? Actually, this is a really good question. The V10 Performance definitely has a few touchier points like the brakes, stiff suspension, but it's a V10 and overall it's very manageable. Also, unlike the NSX, the length of this R8 is so small, which makes it very easy to maneuver around. Question number seven, what is the weirdest part about the car? Hmm. Well, actually, there is one thing that kind of threw me for a loop. It's under the frunk. There's this giant flap trigger that actually requires a bit of muscle to use. But who could even fit in here that would possess the strength to be able to flip this flap? And question number eight. Can you eat a... I don't want to say it. Oh, I'm going to change the word. Can you eat a hot dog in slow motion standing outside the car? <sighs> All right, you know what? If you've made it this far, I guess you've earned it. I mean, I know 200 grand is not chump change, but what other V10 can you get for this price point today? Even its sibling, the Huracan, retails way higher for this. And a huge shout out to Audi for giving me the opportunity to lab mom test this beautiful 2020 R8 V10 Plus. Make sure you tune in next week for a proper lab tested episode. If you've enjoyed this episode, make sure you subscribe and also follow me on Twitch. I'm gonna be giving away another ASUS graphics card in an upcoming sim race. And as usual, we'll be posting photos of this R8 on our Instagram page all week. So be sure to check it out. I'll see you next time, bye.